welcome you to Tuesday night service at the Church of God, 4601 South Drexel Boulevard. Amen. We want to welcome those that are of church members, friends, family members, whoever might have seen it on Facebook. Welcome. We have a lesson for you tonight. We hope it will be a blessing to you. We're going to talk about from Egypt to Canaan. There's a journey that, we, that takes place from the land of Egypt to Canaan. It, it happened in the Old Testament, and for us, that's a type and a shadow of our experience as well in this salvation journey. Click it for us. Okay. Yeah, Sister Kristen, you're going to read for us? All right, let's do Romans, the 15th chapter, verse 4. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry, so, so much zeal. <laughs> Let us have prayer first before we get started. This, this really to go. Thank you. Eternal God, our Father, we want to thank you tonight for your goodness and your mercies unto us. Father, we thank you that things are as well as they are. In this present distress, when we can't get together, we thank you, dear God, that you've made a way for us to yet get together. Even though it might be in cyberspace, we can yet edify one another, and we thank you for it. Lord God, we pray you remember this world, dear God. Father, there are others who don't have a hope, others that don't have the comforter that you've given us. Lord, remember them. Show mercy on this world, dear God. Give them a mind to seek your face before it's too late. In Jesus' precious name, now bless the class tonight and get the glory all to yourself. Edify the body, inform those that are not informed, and just make us a blessing to whosoever, dear God. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All righty. Now we're going to talk about Pharaoh in a second. Romans 15th chapter, verse 4. What does that say? For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. So the things that we're going to cover tonight were written for our learning. That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Yes. So our hope is through the scriptures. Let us get the lesson from the scriptures we covered tonight. All right, let's go keep that same picture. Exodus. We want to do the first chapter, verses 8, 9, and 10. Exodus 1, verses 8, 9, and 10. Let's see what that says. From Egypt to Canaan, we're going to take a journey. So just relax in your seats, wherever you are, and we'll take this journey together. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, yes. which knew not Joseph. All right. And he said unto his people, mm -hmm. Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Yes. Come on, let us deal wisely with them. Let's deal wisely with God's people, read it. Lest they multiply, and it come to pass that where, when there falleth out any war, they join also our enemies and fight against us. And so get them up out of the land. So they were in a land of, of slavery, click for us. Slavery, a land of bondage, a land of oppression. And we can equate ourselves with that in, the, in times past when we weren't saved. We were oppressed. There was a type of bondage the devil had on us. We couldn't do the things we wanted, but we thought we were. We could not do the things we wanted to do. So here, this is kind of a foggy picture of another one following it. But they were under heavy bondage, whipped by Pharaoh. No mercy shown on them. Amen. Click the picture. Let's see another one. This is one on it, in and out, I think. Here you have a, an Egyptian relief showing a picture of slavery. Mm -hmm. Where you see the people were making bricks. And that's what the Bible talked about the children of Israel were forced Amen. to make. Amen. To go find straw and whatever they could find, wherever they could find it, and make the same tail of bricks that they made when they were given the materials to work with. All right? Let's keep that for a minute. Do um, same. Exodus 1, let's do 11 through 14. Therefore, they did set over them taskmasters yes. to afflict them with their burdens. Yes. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities. 
Python, and Ramses. And you can see Ramses even until this day, read it. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew, yes. and they were grieved because of the children of Israel. Read on. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. Verse 14. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage, in mortar, and in brick, and in all manner of service in the field. Yes. All their service wherein they made them serve was with rigor. Their service was with rigor, that is hard bondage. That's why so many of us are praising God and thanking God that we were delivered. Amen. Because we remember the hard bondage that we endured. All right? Um, click for us. And we want to read Exodus, the third chapter. We're going to start reading verses 1 through 14. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, who yes. the Midian, mm -hmm. and he left the flock into the backside of the mountain and came to the mountain of God, yes. even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush, mm -hmm. and he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. It's amazing how God knows how to get our attention. And truly, he does. this was his way of getting Moses' attention. All right, read it. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. Mm -hmm. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, yes. God called him out of the midst of the bush mm -hmm. and said, Moses, Moses. Yes. And he said, here am I. So when God sees that we're willing to pay attention, when he's getting our attention and we stop and we're ready to listen, God has something to tell us, too. Mm -hmm. God will call us by our name. 45 years ago, I remember God calling me Deborah. I love that. A little technical oh, difficulty nice. here. <laughs> but I remember him calling me by my name, and I, and I remember it wasn't my voice. You know, when you think, you think in your own voice. I heard a man's voice say, Deborah, you crucified Christ every day of your life. That was more than long after that, that I gave my heart to God. We know it says. And he said, draw not nigh hither, mm -hmm. put off thy shoes from off thy feet. Yes. For the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Read. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrow. Yes. And I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of the land unto a good land, yes. and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey. What's so beautiful about God when he saves us? He lets us know what we can look forward to. Right. Things will be better for you. You're going to be all right. I will bless you. I'll answer your prayers, right? Yes. And in this case, he was talking about something even better. He was talking about a sanctified experience. Yes. Already. What promises that he already planned, already made for the children of Israel. Read on. Unto the place of the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Mm -hmm. Now, nine. therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me. God heard our cries. Yes. They came all the way unto God. And you know, it might not be that we were just crying, oh God, I need, we might not have even known how to do that. Right. Yes. And I know I didn't. No. I didn't know how to pray. No. I had never really prayed since I was a little girl. Now I lay me down to sleep, right? Mm -hmm. That's all I knew. Yeah. When I got older, it was like, eh. But yet there was a cry down in my soul. Yes. I was not happy. I needed something, and I didn't even know what it was, but I knew I didn't have what I needed. Yeah. Right. And God, in his understanding, yeah. heard my cry. Read it. And I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Yes. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, mm -hmm. that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. So he gave, he gave Moses a mission mm -hmm. to lead the people of God out from wicked bondage, mm -hmm. right? Out from slavery, from despair, 
from being destitute and, and just without a hope right. to bring them out of that. Didn't Christ do that for yes, us? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He had a mission. Yes. And he came down here to say, to let the devil know, let my people go. Amen. And thank God he paid the price for us to be free. Click it for us. Let's look at Exodus 10, chapter, verse 3. And Moses and Aaron came in unto Pharaoh and said unto him, Yes. Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, All right. How long wilt thou refuse to humble thyself before me? Mm -hmm. Let my people go, that they may serve me. That's right, because he had gone several times to Pharaoh, letting him know, okay, God's letting him know, let the people go so they can serve God. Pharaoh said, who's the Lord? What do I care about your God? Right? Well, that was his attitude then. And so he had another warning. How long do I have to keep telling you this? Why? God was being merciful to him even to give him another chance. Mm -hmm. But if Pharaoh hardened his heart, the time came where God hardened Pharaoh's heart for him. Mm -hmm. Because there was a lesson for Pharaoh to learn that he would never forget. All right? Click it. There were 10 plagues that God laid upon the Egyptians. Plagues with rivers and all the water turning into blood. And you know what I thought about today when I was looking up these plagues? You can read them for yourself for time's sake. But as I thought about those plagues, I thought about how God can plague people today. Yeah. How God can get a hold of people's hearts and get a hold of their minds by letting things happen that they have no control over. That's what happened to the children in Israel because of their wickedness. God got their attention by doing what? Letting loose these plagues one after another, then give them a warning. They didn't listen, here come another plague. Gave them a warning, and there was another one. And do you know these things affected their economy? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, does that sound familiar? Yes, yeah. it does. Yes, all the land of Egypt was affected. Yes. With the gnats, lice, flies, all kinds of disease. Livestock was their economy. Yes. Their crops was their economy, but the locusts ate it up. Yeah. Wow. All kinds of terrible storms with hail and fire. Until finally the death of the firstborn. Mm. My God took all that for Pharaoh to let God's people go. Oh, my Lord. Click for us. Pharaoh finally conceded. He couldn't handle this. Click again. And here are the people of God running free. Love Let's it. look at Psalm 106. We're going to be verses 7 through 12 there. 106 Psalm verses 7 through 12. Thank God for freedom. Amen. Amen. Sometimes I look at that and I say, I, that reminds me of 45 years ago. Even though I didn't come through all that water, probably would have scared me half to death. But thank God. I can understand that. Run for your life. Yes. When God deals with you and lets you know there's a better life, run for it. Sure. Amen. Don't stop and think about it and the devil will beat your thinking. Run for your life. Lord. Read for us, sis. Psalm 106, verse 7. All right. Our fathers understood not thy wonders in Egypt. Yes. They remembered not the multitude of thy mercy. Yes. Pro but provoked him at the sea, mm -hmm. even at the Red Sea. Read it. Nevertheless, he saved them for Nevertheless. his name's sake, that he might make his mighty power to be known. He saved them. Yeah. Nevertheless, as they came through, he was saving them mm -hmm. from that awful bondage and slavery back in Egypt. Read it. He rebuked the Red Sea also. Yes. And it was dried up. So he led them through the depths as through the wilderness. The wilderness. Why? Why? Because they came through on dry land. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. Thinking God could do that for them? Letting them know who he is. He could have found another way for them to escape. But no, this was impossible. Mm -hmm. You know it was impossible for us to save ourselves? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was impossible. Right. But God made a way. Yes. To this day, we can't really explain what happened. No. We just know it did. Yes. Amen. Amen. So you see how this is a type and shadow of our experience as we journey through this? Mm -hmm. Read, sis. 
And he saved them from the hand of him that hated them mm -hmm. and redeemed them from the hand of the enemy. Yes. And the waters covered their enemies. Yes. There was not one of them left. Didn't the blood of Jesus cover all of our committed sins? Amen. He didn't leave a one of them. Amen. He didn't save us from smoking and we're still cussing. Amen. Now, you know, there are people out there that still do that. They say, well, I'm saying, I just do a little something. A little something what? The blood of Jesus cleanses. Yes. This coming through the Red Sea being saved from all of their past was a type of coming through the blood of Christ. Amen. Isn't that a beautiful thing? How God in the Old Testament as well as in the New was able to explain to us his message of salvation, his plan of full salvation. Read a little more. Then believe they his words. Yes. They sang his praise. Stop there. If they believe it, click for us. Exodus 15, verses 1, 2, and 3. They believed his word. That experience was enough to let them know God was God and salvation was real. Same thing with us. When we got saved, did we believe? We, we believed, but we made ourselves believe that he was real because we wanted him to be real when we got saved. We wanted something to happen, right? So we came to him by faith with the hope that he would really manifest himself like people told us he would. But when we got saved, we knew for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You couldn't tell us any different then. I know what I know. Right. That's right. Same thing here. They know that was God that brought them through the Red Sea, right? There's a point to be made in saying that. Read for us, sister. Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song mm -hmm. to the Lord. Yes. And spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. Yes. The horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. Amen. The Lord is my strength and song, mm -hmm. and he has become my salvation. Yes. He is my God. Yes. And I will prepare him in habitation. My father's God, and I will exalt him. Next one. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. We found out that God was a warrior. Yes. And guess what? He taught us how to be warriors, too. Praise God. Amen. I'm so glad I'm a warrior. I don't know what to do. Say, like, devil, where are you at? I'm not scared of you. Amen. Amen. Let's look at the wilderness story now. They've come through the Red Sea. They're praising God. They've been freed from the bondage of Pharaoh. Deuteronomy 8th chapter. We'll start at verse 2 and start reading down 2 to 10. And we'll interrupt. All right, so click for us. So, you know, when you get saved, you're thinking, oh, it's all going to be good now. Everything's going to be all right. We're going to be happy, and everybody's going to be loving and joyous. And God will answer all my prayers and give me everything I need. And I'm just going to skip off, tw you know, tiptoeing through the tulips, right? It's all going to be okay. Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> there is an experience that we have to go through. They wow. did it, and yeah. we do it too. Yeah. It's called the wilderness experience. Mm -hmm. There is a time when you're going to learn what it means to depend on God. Amen. Not on our, we always depended on ourselves or depended on other, other human beings for this, that, or the other, or compromise to sin to get what we wanted. Now it's different. Now they have to learn. If they don't depend on God, they won't make it. Amen. The wilderness of itself had nothing to offer, mm -mm. but God had everything they needed. And that was the point. So they had to learn, learn about God. Learn his word. Learn to depend on him. Let their faith start to build. That's what we're talking about. Deuteronomy 8 and 2 says what? And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness. Yes. To humble thee mm -hmm. and to prove thee. Yes. To know what was in thine heart. Mm -hmm. Whether thou wouldst keep his commandments or no. So there was a purpose in bringing people through the wilderness. Bringing the saints mm -hmm. through the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Number one, you need to be humble. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because mm -hmm. when you're out there in sin, you are not humble. Mm -hmm. You're busy having your way. Can't tell you nothing. That's our testimony too. Otherwise, how will we know? Right. Right. Hard-headed, stiff-necked, stubborn, yep. bad attitudes, cursing, right? Yep. Telling people off and think, I'm so big and bad, you're going to don't stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with me. I'll take care of you. Right? Well, that has to change. Just because he forgave us for the things we did in spiritual Egypt, that doesn't mean Egypt was all the way out of us. Right. right. And that's where the problem was. 
Just like man has that Adamic nature, even though he's forgiven, there's still something he got to really fight now because he can't give in to that nature anymore, right? So they have to learn not to give in to their own nasty ways. Amen. That's the purpose of the wilderness, to see would you keep his commandments or not, read on. Mm -hmm. And he humbled thee, he did, and read. suffered thee to hunger, mm -hmm. and fed thee with manna, right. which thou knewest not, mm -hmm. neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. These were lessons to be learned. Read on. Thy raiment waxed not old upon thee, neither did thy foot swell these forty years. Look how God manifested himself. All the time they were in the wilderness, they didn't need any new clothes. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. They should have been in rags <laughs> wow. after coming through all those years. But God wouldn't even let those things get old. Mm. Our experience never gets old. You right. know that? Mm -hmm. No matter how long we're saved, our spirits are our, our, our spirit is just renewed day Amen. by day. Yeah. Everything stays light and fresh and free and beautiful. Mm -hmm. No matter how long we stay saved, yeah. if we're obedient, if we come through that wilderness like we're supposed to, if we humble ourselves like God wants to teach us and learn to build our faith in God. Read mm -hmm. on. Thou shalt also consider in thine heart mm -hmm. that as a man chasteneth his son, so the Lord thy God chasteneth thee. Yes. Therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God mm -hmm. to walk in his ways and yes. to fear him. And these are the things that we learn in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. He doesn't wait to even say five years to teach you that you need to be obedient. No. That's the first thing you learn when you get saved. Mm -hmm. And if you didn't learn it yet, you need to start over. Mm. Wow. Mm. All right? If you didn't learn how to be obedient, it's time to rededicate yourself and repent mm. for your stubbornness. Because yeah. stubbornness is sin. Yeah. Yes, All it right? is. All mm right? -hmm. Read on, sis. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good mm. land. There's that promise again. Read it. A land of brooks of water. Yes. Of fountains and depths that spring out of valleys and yes. hills. Amen. A land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees Beautiful and Beautiful lands. A land of olive oil and honey. Read it. A land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. You'll be able to have food and you won't run out. You won't have to wonder where the next meal is. You won't have to wonder where the water is. That won't be a problem. Why? Because you'll be in a rich land. Read it. Thou shalt not lack anything in it, a land whose stones are iron, and out of whose hills thou mayest dig brass. Read it. When thou hast eaten and art full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he hath given thee. Now that was some good word to build on, wasn't it? Yeah. Really nice. Mm -hmm. Exodus 16 and 2. Let's see how the children of Israel received it. That was good, encouraging word. That should have been enough to take them all the way across the wilderness and right on into Canaan land. Mm. Well, let's see what happened. Exodus 16 and 2 says what? And the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. They murmured. They complained. They didn't have this. What about that? And wish we had died over in Egypt, right? Mm. All right, let's read Exodus 17. We're going to read verse 1, first of all, then verses 3 and 4. We're going to skip around for time's sake. Exodus 17 and 1, what does that say? And all the congregation of the children of Israel journeyed from the wilderness of sin after their journeys, according to the commandment of the Lord, mm -hmm. and pitched in Rephidim, and there was no water for the people to drink. Verse 3. And the people thirsted there for water. Mm -hmm. And the people murmured against Moses and mm -hmm. said, Wherefore is this that thou hast brought us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst? Verse 4. And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, What shall I do unto this people? They be almost ready to stone me. That's the wilderness. That's carnality. That's flesh. What they were to learn coming through the wilderness was how to deny their flesh. That's good. And the worst mistakes we can make is to take up for our flesh when we're coming through that wilderness experience in salvation today. We learn not to make the mistakes that they made. 
All right? Not to be ungrateful, not to be unbelieving. Mm -hmm. Their part was to learn how to trust God. Mm -hmm. If they were thirsty, they could have prayed. Yeah. But they took the easy route. Take it out on Moses. Mm -hmm. Pastor Moses, this. Pastor Moses, that. Complain, complain. Read on, sis. And the Lord said unto Moses, mm -hmm. Go on before the people, and take with thee of the elders of Israel and thy rod, wherewith mm -hmm. thou smotest the river, mm -hmm. take in thy hand, and go. Behold, I will stand before thee there upon the rock in Horeb, and thou shalt smite the rock, and there shall come water out of it, that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. Verse 7. And he called the name of the place Massa mm -hmm. and Meribah because of the chiding of the children of Israel and because they tempted the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Where was their faith? Mm -hmm. Where was their faith? They just came through the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. They just saw all of those unbelievable plagues that were laid on the, the, the Egyptians. They forgot just that fast. Isn't that amazing? If we don't keep our uh, experience yeah. up, if we don't keep our relationship up with God and keep that prayer life alive and vibrant, if we don't seek in his word and seek to get to know God for ourselves, we won't be any different from the children of Israel. We have seen it. The devil, the same devil that took the and got them out of order is the same one that comes against us today. Sure. Satan did not die. That's right. No. So we need to learn from these lessons. Yeah. All right? So we don't make the same mistakes. Mm -hmm. All right, let's look at this. Exodus 24. Verse 12. We'll start there. Exodus 24 and 12. And the Lord said unto Moses, Come up to me into the mount, and be there. Mm -hmm. And I will give thee tables of stone, yes. and a law, and commandments, which I have written, that thou mayest teach them. Mm -hmm. Read it. And Moses rose up, and his minister Joshua, and Moses went up into the mount of God. Verse 15. And Moses went up into the mount, and a cloud covered the mount. 17. And the sight of the glory of the Lord was like devouring fire oh on the God. top of the mountain in yes. the eyes of the children of Israel. 18. And Moses went into the midst of the cloud and got him up into the mount. And Moses was in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. You know, Pastor Moses was really no different from the ministers today. When we're leading the God's precious sheep, right? We're leading the new converts and we're teaching them. God has to give us how to teach the babies. Amen. He has to show us how to teach his little sheep. We can't feed them with the depths of revelation. You know what I mean? Oh, we're going to talk about the, the, the horror. And the, they're going to go, what? A monster came out of the water? Where? Where? Oh, God. Right. We can't give them that. That's Scare like trying babies. to feed a little baby steak and potatoes. They're going to choke on it. Scare the babies. Scare the babies. That's right. Like, what, what kind of church am I in, really? <laughs> Don't scare the babies. So God has to teach us. What does he tell us? Come on up. Yeah. Come on up the mount. Get alone with me. I want to give you a law. I want to give you statutes and judgments where you can feed my people. Isn't that beautiful? Amen. Yeah. He's so faithful. All right. Uh, click for us. While he was getting his blessing from God and God was manifesting himself with the fire and the cloud and all of that, Exodus 32, I want you to read verse 1 first of all and then we'll skip around. He was receiving his beautiful laws, ready to feed the children of Israel. He's so happy what God has shown him and blessed his soul, right? Ready to come down, all right? What happened? Click again for us. Exodus 32 and 1 says what? And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, mm -hmm. the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and mm -hmm. said unto him, Listen to this. Up, make us gods. Make us, us gods. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we want not what has become of him. We don't know what happened to Moses. Come on, we got to do something here that's taking too long. Let's make some gods. Here's the God that brought us out of Egypt. Look at it, oh ugly cow. Isn't that amazing? 
ungrateful. And we're saying, we don't know what happened to this Moses who brought us up out of the land of Egypt. Mm. They remember that part, what they came out of. Okay. But if we don't take a stand against flesh, look what it can do for you. Mm. And that, that might be, that's an exaggeration. Oh, no, it's not. Mm. No, it's not. You'll party, you'll complain, you'll cause trouble, you'll tear up the church and everything else. Because what? Those devils are just waiting on the sideline, waiting for you to fall into their hands if we don't obey God and appreciate what he's done for us. They were not learning their lessons in the wilderness. My Lord. All right? Um, read verses 7 and 8 for us. Verse 7, And the Lord said unto Moses, yes. Go, get thee down, for thy people which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. Yes, verse 8. They have turned aside quickly. They turned aside quickly, Quick. read it. Out of the way which I commanded them. Mm -hmm. They have made them a molten calf, and have worshipped it, and have sacrificed thereunto, mm -hmm. and said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And so where did they get that from? Egypt. Amen. Their time down in Egypt. Yes. They exposed all those different gods and those ugly idols that the people worshiped because they weren't willing to take a stand against their own ways, right? Against their own flesh. Those old ways started coming back up. Amen. They started to come back and take them over. And they fell right back into the same old thing that they were in when they were in Egypt. Yeah. They didn't die. Now here they were saved from Egypt. Right. Mm -hmm. But because they didn't take a stand, Amen. Egypt came back on them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is the same for us. If we don't have a conviction right. against that past life we once right. had, on. if we don't look at it with fondness, oh yeah, I was the best, this, I was a lady killer, I was a, you know, some people will talk sometimes, right. better watch out, you'll, you'll be killing them again. Yeah. All right? That's right. We don't want to love that past. We yeah. hate the past. Amen. We're ashamed of what we used to be. Oh, yeah. No matter how good or how bad it looked, it was the past, it was in sin, it was bad. Yeah. That's right. So we don't want to go there. Mm -hmm. They were not ashamed of what they came out of. They should have been. Mm -hmm. But this is leading them right back to it. Mm -hmm. All right, read for us um, verse 17. And when Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted, mm -hmm. he said unto Moses, there is a noise of war in the camp. Do you know Joshua was waiting at the bottom of that mountain for his pastor? He was so faithful. Mm -hmm. He was the one that always attended to his pastor, was right there for him. It was Joshua. Mm -hmm. Isn't that a blessing? Yes. And he wasn't a part of that mess that was going on in the camp. He, he, he came out of the camp waiting on his pastor. Thank the Lord. And he said, there's a noise of war in the camp. Pastor, read it. And he said, It is not the voice of them that shout for mastery, neither is it the voice of them that cry for being overcome, mm -hmm. but the noise of them that sing do I hear. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass as soon as he came nigh unto the camp that he saw the calf and the dancing, and Moses' anger waxed hot. Oh, God. And he cast the tablet tables out of his hands and break them beneath the mount. In his anger, he broke the word that God gave him to wow. teach the children of Israel. Lord, Click for us. Let's read verses 21 and 22. And Moses said unto Aaron, What people, what did this people unto thee that thou hast brought so great a sin upon them? Aaron, how could you forget what God did for us? How God used us. How could you go along with these people and give them what they wanted? How could you do that? And Aaron said, Let not the anger of my Lord wax hot. Thou knowest the people that they are set on the mischief. Mm -hmm. not, a, not a good excuse. Can't blame it on other people when you compromise with them. Well, if so and so hadn't done it, I wouldn't have done this. Tell that to God and see how far you get. All right. Man. All right. God told you what to do. God told Aaron what to do. God told the people, the people of God, the children of Israel what to do. Right. And no one had an excuse. That's why the Bible says, um, be not a partaker of other men's sin. Keep yourself pure. Right. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove exactly. them. Yeah. Aaron failed to reprove them. He went along with them. You're going to do one or the other. Read. Uh, let's see, what verse, what verse just read 24? 
We just finished 22. Okay, read 24. Verse 24, and I said unto them, mm -hmm. Whosoever hath any gold, let them break it off. So they gave it me. Then I cast it into the fire, and there came out this calf. Isn't that a, that's a sad, that's sad, oh, yeah. <laughs> sad excuse. All right? Because why? He couldn't compensate for his shame. Right. right. And that's what he was, he didn't want to sure. take that shame. Wow. All right? Let's move on to the next uh, click for us. And let's go to verse 26. Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, mm -hmm. Who is on the Lord's side? Who was mm -hmm. on the Lord's side? Now, you thought everybody was on the Lord's side that came out of Egypt. Right. They weren't. Mm -hmm. Now, what do we see here? A process of elimination beginning. Amen. There it begins. And we see that even among us, process yeah. of elimination. Wow. If you don't want to give your whole heart to God, God sees that. Yeah. It's just a matter of time. Yeah. That's right. Those tests and trials will, will expose us, right? Yeah. Well, Aaron got exposed. The children of Israel that wanted to play got exposed, right? Mm -hmm. God said, okay, I see you. Process of elimination. Read. Who is on the Lord's side? Mm -hmm. Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. Verses 31 to 35. And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, Oh, this people have sinned a mm. great sin. Mm. A and great have made one. them gods of gold. Oh, my God. A great sin. Yeah. Yeah. Yet mm -hmm. now if thou will forgive their oh. sin. Mm. And if not, block me. Yeah. I pray thee wow. out of thy book, wow. which thou hast written. Oh God. How about that for love and devotion? Yeah. Yes. He loved God so much and he loved the children of Israel so much he was willing to give his soul away. Wow. Just so the children of Israel could survive, so wow. they would live, that God would show mercy. Isn't that something? Intercede. Yes. Intercessory. Yes. Standing at the gap. Mm -hmm. That's what God's ministers do. Yes. It yes. is. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes the saints might not realize the devotion that we have and the love we have for mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. That we're willing to sacrifice almost anything mm -hmm. to help mm -hmm. them to make it. Mm -hmm. Amen. And it's true. It's yeah. true. Yeah. All right. Verse 32. Did I read, you read that? Uh, yes. No. 33. And the Lord okay. said unto Moses, Whosoever hath sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. God is fair. 34. Therefore now go, lead the people unto the place of which I have spoken unto thee. Mm -hmm. Behold, mine angel shall go before thee. Nevertheless, in the day when I visit, I will visit their sin upon them. Uh oh. And the Lord plagued the people because they made the calf which Aaron made. He mm -hmm. plagued the people. Mm -hmm. We reap what we sow. Mm -hmm. That's been since the beginning of time. Yes. Now let's look at another incident that went on in the wilderness. All right, number 16. Now you would think after all of that ruckus and what happened there and, and the, the whipping that God had to lay on the people, the children of Israel, that would have been enough. It wasn't. Number 16 and 1, what does that say? Click for us. Now Korah, the son of Ishhar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and Dathan, and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and On, the sons of Peleth, sons of Reuben, took men, mm -hmm. and they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, mm -hmm. men of mm -hmm. renown. Mm -hmm. Read on. And they gathered them. themselves together Clean against for us. Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, We take too much upon you, mm -hmm. seeing all the congregation are <laughs> wow, yes. every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Yeah. Look at all these people. Yeah. It started out with Korah. Mm -hmm. Then he took some men and their influence, because they were so well known in the congregation of Israel, their influence spread till they had 250 people standing behind them against Pastor Moses. Wow. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. That's the power of influence. Yes. It can be so great, mm. or it can be so damaging, Yes. so bad, right? Mm -hmm. Read on, sis. Wherefore then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. God talked to us just like he talks to you. How, how are you going to make yourself a king over us? Uh, did Korah lead them out of the land of Egypt? No. Did Korah put up his rod and cause the water to go here and there? No, ma'am. No. He didn't pay the price, but he wanted the, the what can I call it? The glory. Mm -hmm. He wanted the glory. Yeah. 
Yeah. He wanted the, the uh, so there's something else I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. The um, prestige. Prestige, all of that. Mm. He wanted it, but he wasn't willing to pay the price for it. Mm. 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 And when Moses heard it, he fell upon his face. I know he did. And he spake unto Korah and unto all his company, saying, mm -hmm. Even tomorrow the Lord will show who oh, are yeah. his and who is mm. Lord, oh, and will cause him to come near unto him. Mm -hmm. Even him whom he hath chosen will he cause to come near unto him. Verse 8. And Moses said unto Korah, Here I pray you, ye sons of Levi. In spite of all of the disrespect yeah. and how they ganged up on him, mm. Moses still stayed humble. Thank God. He tried to reason with them. Mm. Trying to help them to see themselves. Yeah. Read it for us, sis. Seemeth it but a small thing unto you that the God of yes. Israel has separated you from the congregation of Israel mm -hmm. to bring you near to himself to do the service of the tabernacle oh. of the Lord? Yes. And to stand before the congregation to minister unto them? Oh Is that a small thing to Not you? Not at all. That God lifted you up to the ministry? These were ministers. Oh my God. Amen. Is that a small thing that you would act any old kind of way that you'd be willing to tear the church up so you could have preeminence? Wow. My God. That's the same devil that's running around here today Amen. in the New Testament age. Amen. That devil has not changed. Amen. I want you to do verse 23 and just start reading down and I'll cut you off at some point. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, mm -hmm. Speak unto the congregation, saying, Get you up from about the tabernacle of Korah, uh -huh. Nathan, and Abijah. And it's no different today when we see people are trying to cause dissension, trying to cause division in the church. What's the first thing you hear from the ministers? Get away from that person. Do not, do not let yourself go along with their spirit unless you fall under that spirit. And the curse on them will be on you too. Yep. God will get you too. Watch yourself, right? Yep. You hold judgment. All right, read on. And Moses rose up and went unto Dathan and Abiram, and the elders of Israel followed him. 26. And he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men, mm -hmm. and touching nothing of theirs, lest ye be consumed in all their sins. Now that's God's attitude back then, the same today, read on. 27. So they got up from the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram on every side, and Dathan and Abiram came out and stood in the door of their tents, and their wives, and their sons, and their little children. Next. And Moses said, Hereby ye shall know that the Lord hath sent me to do all these works. Oh, you're going to know. I have not done them of my own mind. Mm -hmm. 29. If these men die the common death of all men, mm -hmm. or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord hath not sent me. God, mm -hmm. God knew. And wow. Moses knew what he was talking about because he knew God. Yes. For us. Let's see what happens when God put his opinion on it. Mm. See where they went? Yeah. There right. goes Korah, Dathan, his family, his children, everything he owned, his tents, and everything else. Read verse 30 for us. But if the Lord make a new thing, and the earth open her mouth and swallow them up with all that appertains unto them, and they go down mm -hmm. wicked mm -hmm. to the pit, mm -hmm. then ye shall understand wow. that these men have provoked the Lord. Wow. When God manifests himself when they get swallowed up in that pit, you're going to know that they provoked God. Yes. It wasn't that they were so much and that they were provoking me. This is God's church, right? Those are God's people. Yes. Even today, you will stand up against the ministry, against pastor, against leadership. You're not provoking us. It's God that yes. you're provoking. Yes. This is the church of God. Yes. And we can't forget that. His church, he set us in the body as it pleased him. We didn't come up here knowing how to do this. Mm. He had to give us a gift. Mm. Yes. That's right, yes. And seeking God's face, just wanting to be used. Mm. Yes. And God in his faithfulness gave us different gifts for his glory, right? right. Different ways of teaching. Mm -hmm. Praise to be a blessing to God's people. Mm -hmm. So when you don't want you don't see that, I don't see that, I don't it don't take all that. You're telling you're telling that to God, not us. My Lord. What verse did you leave off there? And I finished verse 30. Okay, I'm going to stop there for time's sake because I'm getting away. I'm not going to be able to finish. Do, um, let's see. Let's go on. Let's leave that. Hold, hold the picture, though. Numbers 21 and 5. You got the gist of what happened there. Numbers 21 and 5. We're still talking about coming through the wilderness. 
how we're supposed to learn, right? Learn how to humble ourselves. Learn how to follow leadership. Learn how to have faith in God. Mm -hmm. Learn how to trust God for the things that we need when they're not being provided in the wilderness, right? right. It was a learning experience, and they were not good students of that learning at all. Not at all. What does Numbers 21 and 5 say? And the people spake against God and against Moses. Mm -hmm. Wherefore have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? Mm -hmm. For there is no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul loatheth is like bread. Click for us, Sister Prensa. There is the manna. Mm. And God had given them manna to provide food, right? Nourishment for them. But because it didn't taste like turkey and greens and, and gravy, you know, and, <laughs> and, 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 and all, all that other good stuff and mac and cheese, it didn't taste like all that. So therefore, they said, our soul loathes. We hate this little light bread. Oh God. It was given them by God. Oh God. Numbers 26, verse 65. How did God react to their attitude? You know, God was very long-suffering. Through, even through this journey we've covered so far, we, didn't, we can't cover everything, but this will give you a good idea of what it means to be carnal. This is a time of carnality and not learning what they should have learned to prepare them to go in, to go across the Jordan River into sanctification. Numbers 26, verse 65. Yes. For the Lord had said of them, they shall surely die in the wilderness. I wouldn't want God to say that about me. No. Mm -mm. Who no. was God saying that about? Mm -hmm. Who was God prophesying that on? We don't want that. We don't. Surely they're going to die in the wilderness. Read it. And there was not left a man of them, save Caleb the son of Jephunneh and Joshua the son of Nun. Mm -hmm. The only two that came out of Egypt that wholly followed the Lord yes. and that worked with their pastor. Isn't that something? The only two. Everybody else ended up eventually dying in the wilderness. And poor Moses. We're going to have to stop at this one because we had a whole other part for Joshua. So we'll do that another night. But poor Moses being provoked, right? Dealing with them all these 40 years. Mm -hmm. All of their bad manners, all their nasty attitude, all their disobedience and unbelief. Let's go to Numbers 20th chapter, and we're going to be verses 7 through 12. Numbers 20, verses 7 through 12. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, mm -hmm. Take the rod and gather thou the assembly together, thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak ye unto the rock before their eyes. Now, he had a reason for telling him that because the first time he told him to smite the, to smite the rock sometime back. But this time he said, I want you to speak to the rock before their eyes. Don't even hit it. Just speak to it. Why? Show God's power. Let God get the glory, right? This is a miracle. Let God get it. And not only that, it may have been to test Moses because he was already provoked. Mm. Now, just humbly speak to it and gather all these people that are getting on your nerves. <laughs> gather them all together so they can get their water, right? Mm -hmm. Let's see what happened. And it shall give forth his water and thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock. So thou shalt give the congregation and their beasts drink. Mm -hmm. Verse 9. And Moses took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron gathered to the congregation together before the rock. Mm -hmm. And he said unto him, unto them, Hear now ye rebels. Listen to me, the, you this man was his book. He had he was up to here with the children of Israel. No. You know, we can't allow ourselves to get there. Right. We cannot. Mm -hmm. Thank God he's a God of all grace. Amen. Yes. See, when you, when you find yourself starting to feel like you're getting full, it's time to go back to prayer. Right. Uh, I, I, I must not have prayed enough today. Something's wrong. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. right. Lord, help me now. Yeah. That's right. We have to stay humble. What we do as the ministry yeah. is before the eyes of the people. Yeah. We have to sanctify God in the sight of the saints. Yeah. Why? Because how we behave how we handle things is how the people are going to give respect to God. Right. Because we're the examples. Yeah. Yeah. Moses was their example. Mm -hmm. And he failed the test this time. Oh my God. <laughs> All right, you rebels, read it. 
And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod, he smote the rock twice. Oh, rebel! Now I'm gonna use the pointer, right? Oh, rebels! Go on and drink! Go on and drink, you old rebels! Oh, God. And the water oh, came out abundantly, oh, and the congregation oh, drank at their feast. Oh, but what happened? You know, we reap what we sow. No matter how good we've been down through the years, wow. if we mess up somewhere, we gotta pay for that, yeah. right? Yeah. Right. So let's see what happens, and then we're gonna close out. This is the end of it for us tonight. Verse twelve says what? And the Lord spake unto Moses mm -hmm. and Aaron. And won't He speak to us after we've made a faux pas? Oh yes, He does. He so quietly comes to us. You shouldn't have done that. That's right. I told you such and such and such a thing, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Why didn't you close your mouth when I told you? Yeah. Now you got to go back to so and so mm -hmm. and humble yourself and repent for what you said. No, right? Mm -hmm. Read verse twelve. Because ye believed me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel, mm -hmm. therefore ye shall not bring this congregation yeah. into the land which I have given them. My God. And this is what Moses said to God, trying to change his mind. Verse 24, 25, 26, and, and 27. That's it. Aaron shall be gathered unto his people, mm -hmm. for he shall not enter into the land which I have given unto the children of Israel, because he rebelled against my word at the water of Meribah. What verse was that you just reading? 24. Um, Numbers 20. Oh, I am so sorry. This is Deuteronomy 3. I'm sorry. Deuteronomy 3. And we'll start with verse 24. Yeah, we can make mistakes sometimes. And sometimes God will say, okay, I'll give you another chance, right? And then there's sometimes God says, because of what you did, the answer is no. Deuteronomy 3. What verse? Verse 24. 24. O oh Lord God, yes. thou hast begun to show thy servant thy greatness mm -hmm. and thy mighty hand. For what God is there in heaven or in earth that mm -hmm. can do according to thy works and according to thy mind? Trying to butter him up. <laughs> Trying to butter him up. Thee. Read it. I pray thee, let me go over and see the good land that is beyond Jordan, mm -hmm. that goodly mountain in Lebanon. Trying to persuade God to change his mind. Mm -hmm. But the Lord was wroth with me for your sake, yes. and would not hear me. And the Lord said unto me, Let it suffice thee, speak no more unto me of this matter. And when God tells us no, don't keep pushing it. If he says no, it's no. Mm -hmm. All right? Let it suffice. In other words, that's enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't speak to me anymore about this matter. And he told him to get to the top of Pisgah, as you see there, and and just think of the sacrifice that he's, what he has to give up because he allowed himself to get into the flesh in front of the children of Israel. 40 years coming through the wilderness with this as the goal. And all he can do is sit at the top of Mount Pisgah and look at it. Wow. Amen. We don't want to be found there. These things are written for our admonition. Mm -hmm. So the next time we come back, we're going to talk about going on over in, in Jordan. Amen. Crossing over Jordan into Canaan land with Joshua. Amen. So we hope this was a blessing to you. So we've talked about coming through the Red Sea, which is a type of the blood of Christ for us, right? Where we got saved, coming through the wilderness, where we learn how to be humble, obedient, have faith in God, how to follow leadership, how to be a blessing. got to learn how to be one. Mm -hmm. And if we don't, we end up like the children of Israel. Amen. So Amen. may God add a blessing to the lesson. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. You can let them know we'll be broadcasting again Friday, won't you? Okay. So, mm -hmm. so. okay we will be broadcasting again Friday night at 7 o'clock. So stay tuned. <laughs> Give me time for that. Any closing? Mm -hmm.